In this episode of the photo editor, I edit an image I took of a metal fence with a gap bent in the middle. Perhaps this photo reveals a secret desire to be the next Dorothea Lange or Robert Frank, creating dark and gritty photographic records of our harshest landscapes. If you would like to see me to attempt going down this creative path of such thought-provoking imagery, please tap the like button and hit subscribe, and we'll see how it goes. Now let's get editing. And welcome back. So, looking again on a photo walk I did in some rural areas a few months ago, I'm looking at a couple of close-ups I did of a break in the fence. Now... It is of a compositional interest because of the bend in the pole, so it sort of shows a frame within a frame. But I'm particularly interested in how I can uh, really get a good shine on the metal wire and sort of really enhance this uh, artificial barrier we have here between the two, fr sort of the two um, dimensions of the space. So, as usual when I'm trying a couple different shots on the same scene, I like to take a couple of uh, exposures at different light. I'm going to try going with a lighter one on this occasion, because I'm, I'm happy with the background. It's a nice grassy landscape, and typically I'm, I find that sort of agricultural backgrounds are more forgiving, you don't want to cut out as much. So we'll use the lighter setting for this one. So choosing a color filter as usual. Oh, the blue's quite interesting. It uh, really makes the fencing stand out. Usually the blue makes everything look faint. Yes, yeah, so if you want to have a more daylight balance, I suppose you can go from neutral where it's kind of balanced out. A red filter takes a bit more of a focus on the fence and as you progress up to blue the background becomes a bit lighter but then the blue really makes the fence stand out and sometimes it's good to just to really uh, go all out with your uh, visuals and don't hold back so may as well do that today I mean, it's a metal fence, it's a, okay to have a bit of drama. I mean, I don't want it to be too menacing, I don't want it to look like a prison yard. Yeah, so... Maybe we'll go for Ilfa Delta 100. Has a good contrast, and maybe I'll up the clarity on some of the grass in the background afterwards. Uh, we'll see how that looks. don't really feel the need for cropping well as you know I well, let's see how the break in the fence balances so yeah it is a bit biased towards the left so let's, so let's get that more in the middle we don't lose too much detail. 
a good edit because they're sort of the centerpiece in a way this sort of break in the space that we're cre in the dimension we're creating I may as well uh, try and make these two central bars the sort of the gates to the kingdom a bit more prominent so metal uh, tends to respond well to a lot of texture and clarity now because we have all these individual lines I think we're going to have to we're going to be doing a lot of focus spot editing a lot more than if we were to uh, do in a lot of other images where we want to try and blend in the effects so I think a lot of close examination is going to be uh, working in this one yeah, so this sort of rough old metal has a lot of texture to pick up on and you can tell kind of where there was a bit of a bias in how the natural light was falling because the further up it's uh, the texture is not nearly as vivid and sort of metal like this does tend to almost bleach unevenly in some spots okay so, so this is with texture and clarity taken up to the max and I think it works for now so now for the fence wiring I'm going to take a different brush now let's just see what happens if I use a big brush and just go all over it and if that um it has a negative effect on how the background looks so again we'll let the texture and clarity this might actually end up being a simple edit just because it's a, a metal and a, the subject it sort of fills the whole space it's almost like a, a looking at close up at a textile pattern yeah, the background doesn't seem to be suffering so maybe I'll have to do the spot editing in between the fence but I'm really liking how the wires now really pop when you can just use a really big brush just so it doesn't look like you're creating sort of scrapes on the surface yeah. so over here um, on the left it is started, we are starting to see a, f a fair bit of Well, uh, well a, a fair bit of um, grain really showing up so it's kind of like an old street journalism photo and that may work um, I kind of don't want that white patch to be taking too much attention away so I might actually thro throttle back a bit I'll create a new brush and we'll just go around that section and sort of do a tailor edit where that bright spot was appearing if none of you are aware it's worth looking into an Australian photographer Bill Henson now he's most well known for a lot of uh, uh, nude portraits uh, where he sort of explores the vulnerability of people but he aside from those more notable works which is probably more the media's fault than his uh, he actually also creates a lot of uh, landscapes around Australian urban settings that where he puts just as much effort into planning and he likes to focus on a lot of very relatable elements so um, how your local parks look at a certain time of day and everything he's kind of a Monet for the suburbs in that sense so he's well worth looking up if you if you care to do so yeah so it is really grainy but like I in some parts but like I said it's sort of a comet this subject sort of accommodates that So now we have where that bright patch was appearing before 
I'm gonna try dimming it down in between these diamonds and the wiring. So, I'll actually try declaritizing. Is that a word? Declaritizing? Instead of taking down the light because that can sometimes create a splodge, which you don't want. And because the wires are narrow, if small sections are taken up in an edit of a broader part, it can sort of uh, blend in with the rest. I'm sure there's a technical name for the optical effect uh, that that creates. Yes, yeah, so that's a bit more blunt. What happens if we take the clarity back even more? Uh, we're starting to get a, a bit of a halo near the fence here, so I'll keep it at a maybe a quarter diminished. At the same time, I'll blend in this middle part here. Yeah, good. So, it's all about um, where the light falls. Now, evidently, there must have been a bit of a bias in the light falling a bit f further, sort of... Um, 45 degrees to the left. Now it's a question of if I want to balance this out. Because we don't see the sun in here uh, or any clear subject that to create shadow, I'm going to have a go at making it more balanced because we want the focus to be on the fence and sort of looking really even and we have this sort of big intimidating wall but there's a gap in it. It's sort of reaching reaching beyond that space. So, further up here, we'll uh, try upping the shadow a bit. And then along the fence line, I'm going to try using highlights to make it a bit more vivid. One of the greatest uh, unintended compliments I've ever had was when a older man commented on one of my street uh, portraits that uh, how good it was to see a good old natural light picture, no excessive edit, and uh, uh, it was fluttering to know that I sort of tricked his eye be because it was um, it was kind of how, how our mind expects light to look logically, these even shadows coming from pillars, but it wouldn't have actually been possible for 100% natural light to appear that way. So sometimes what we think looks right is different from what reality is. I guess that's a appropriate metaphor for a lot of situations. And it's often a irony in writing and filmmaking where uh, reality when it comes down to it, can actually be quite dull or ineffective, and we need to use visual and creative trickery to uh, send through the message that we actually want. the shadow out further. Further up on the fence line. I try to explain what's going through my mind, but sometimes my, uh, uh, my thinking gets ahead of me.
get the same thing on this pillar now to the left we are starting to get some of that halo again so I made to might have to do a darker brush around the edge just to balance it out but I'd rather had to do something like that then if I were to make too small a brush and it looks too scrapey uh, for those who don't know if you use Lightroom like myself a shortcut to use the to get to the develop menu is uh, you can press the K button and so that's a useful shortcut to have good to in, invest in a bit of knowledge in the keyboard shortcuts you have it's much better than going into the menu tab every time okay going back with the lower shadow along here sort of just balances it out Now let's go in on some of the wiring and see if we can make it the make them stand out a bit more. So this is going to be like a sort of a test section here. Now because the ground is quite dark, it actually doesn't seem to be uh, having too much of a problem with uh, the bleeding of light between the two, two subjects. So that's uh, quite useful. So I'm just going to get in close with a few of these, then we'll uh, zoom out again and see how it looks. do a compare and contrast yeah so it's sort of this section here where we were working and I quite like uh, that now I'll going I'll create a new brush but I'll use the same settings I'm going to try applying those edits more where the skyline is and see if it look if it looks uh, too washed out or not and if so I can just sort of throttle back I'm starting to think of that famous scene from the beginning of Citizen Kane where they have the giant iron fence leading up to this mysterious mansion not that I'm comparing myself to Orson Welles but I do love a dramatic fence actually could probably get away with the larger brush it's quite, um, it's not becoming as uh, complex an edit as I thought it would be, it's, uh, the background is uh, quite forgiving, and so I'm not having the bleed over when I'm making the alterations that I want to the fence. Okay. Alright, so what we've done to the metal in the picture... I'm quite happy with. Maybe I'll dip it down in this upper right section here just because it's starting to look a, just a little overexposed. Not much, just a little. So I'll apply the brush neutral and then can just out it this way. So it looks a bit more even now. So 
so this bleat section on the fence is starting to but I mean, it's sort of like I want either the rest of the fence to be, the rest of the two bars to be like it, or I'll dim that down. So, probably could afford to make the two poles a bit more brighter looking. So I'll try that to begin with. Let's try with the highlights. Uh, yeah, that's starting to work actually. Yeah, so that's blended in a lot more. Once again, I've created a slight halo in the background on either side of the pole, so I'll again take the sort of reverse brush with the highlight taken down a bit just to do a quick st stroke on either side just to get rid of the worst of that halo. That's better. Now, I'll have a go, last thing I'll do for this image is I'll have a go at adding some texture to the grass in the distance here. It may not do much just because it's of how out of focus it is, but we may as well give it a try. So, we'll try in this wide section here where it's uh, it's got a good bit to work with Then a bit more further down. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't really do much. All it does is make the fence more, uh, more overexposed. So let's reverse that one. May as well keep the change I created in the middle here. Middle here, but okay. So that's a new image that we've created. It I like that because you have this uh, gap in the fence. It it's like you're creating a a linkage between two spaces, and so a fence is traditionally quite uh, sort of represents a lot of uh, boundaries. But we've got a sort of breaking through and I like what we've done with the metal we've made it uh, sort of this really great glimmery well not glimmery but a sort of a taken just a, a matte surface and given it just that little bit of a highlighted edge and you can use this in this sort of image where you're not really where you're really only drawing the viewer's attention to a surface you'll generally want it to be a bit more evenly balanced but if you're looking at a subject that has more composition and more focus on a particular spot uh, so a man sitting on a park bench or something you can use the intensity of uh, lighting and clarity along long metal surfaces to draw the viewer's attention that way. 
I believe I mentioned him before, but I I learned a lot a while back from a English photographer called Alan Scheller, who does a lot of great work with urban scenes where you're looking up close at uh, long metallic surfaces, and he does that very well. So well worth uh, looking out for his work as well. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I look forward to our next edit with you. As always, if you want to see more and get notified of when new content is available, which appears twice a week now, please hit subscribe and tap the thumbs up button. And also look at my Twitter and Instagram handles for more content as well. And we will see you next time. Thank you for watching.